BioBalance HealthCast episode 269, Orgasmic Headaches. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counsel. We've all heard the joke about the man who wants to have sex and his wife looks at him and says, not tonight, dear, I have a headache. And it's not a funny joke, but it's a commonly repeated story. And it's pretty sexist in its orientation. Yeah, <laughs> but it is. It is the subject of what we want to talk about today is having a headache around, about, among, during sex. We want to talk about orgasmic headaches. Basically, there are a class of headaches that are not traditional things like migraines or regular headaches from exertion or what have you, uh, or hunger, what uh, medicines. Blood sugar. Uh, they're called HSAs, and they're headaches from sexual activity. And they fall into two broad categories. One is pre-orgasmic, and generally it's a low gradual buildup of a headache during the entire sexual experience to the point of release and then the headache goes away. Mm -hmm. And the other is an orgasmic headache. And you don't have the headache until you have the orgasm. And, and at the moment of orgasmic release, it feels like a giant vice is clamping on the base, of the back or of a your, knife your head. Is going through or there. people describe it as a knife cutting through the base of their, their mm -hmm. spinal cord. I mean, it's just a blinding, painful headache and it's very frightening. Mm -hmm. To negative influence it. to have sex. I mean, who would want to well, have sex if you the, end up having that during yeah, an orgasm? Yeah, the fear of the pain, mm -hmm. the fear they're dying, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. and the fear of going back there again because they might mm -hmm. die, and it is painful. And so it's a, it's a real concern. And not everybody talks about it. As a matter of fact, the reason that we decided to do this conversation, my wife was uh, doing some reading, and she found an article about a woman who was in her 80s who was having these headaches at the moment of orgasm. She was still very sexually active, which hopefully we will all be in our 80s. Uh, but she was embarrassed to speak to her doctor about it because culturally that was not a thing she was comfortable doing. And so she wrote to a doctor in the newspaper. In the newspaper. And said, okay. you know, hey, what about this? So uh, we started looking into it, and we found mm -hmm. some information that we thought would be worth sharing. Both men and women get orgasmic headaches, mm -hmm. but men get them about three times as often as women do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what do we know about orgasmic headaches well, that we the, want to share? <clears throat> In general, I've had people ask me about this, and I haven't mm -hmm. been as well educated as I should have been, but... I, when I did investigate it, and I'm, I don't think there was a lot of research on this until recently, but when I did investigate it, I found that these headaches are usually benign. In other words, they're usually not indicative of a problem in your brain or in, or in your skull or in your neck that would cause this problem. It is basically just a vascular uh, spasm. contraction, spasm mm -hmm. of the blood vessels. But it doesn't really mean anything bad, but we do treat it because it's it's miserable. But but we really have to work, the, work this up. You should see a doctor if you have these and you have them repetitively, then it's very possible that it could be one of four very big things. It could be inflammation, of the uh, meninges around your brain that is being triggered before you would normally feel it uh, in daily life because you feel this pain with orgasm. Because your blood vessels engorge or dilate mm -hmm. at the moment of orgasm, at least in the brain. And then they spasm. And then they spasm, mm -hmm. and so that sort of thumps it or yes. jolts it, mm -hmm. and that's the pain that you feel. Right, and that's so it can be from something like that. Mm -hmm. And that's serious, and that needs to be seen um, by a neurologist or emergently. Then it can be from a uh, a bleed in your brain, which is like a stroke, or it can be a type of stroke. So that's an emergency that has to be considered when you have this, and it doesn't go away, and it's the worst headache of your life. Well, now when you say when it doesn't go away, it, it, you mean every time you have sex, you have it. Right, but when. When you have sex, no. I mean, when you have sex, you have it, and then it continues for hours, hours afterwards. Because it can last as long as 24 hours after Right, but it, it gets worse, usually, right. 
if it's something bad and it just stays the same or gets better over 24 hours. Right. If it's if it's not something that is a serious problem. So it can it also can be a sign of a spat, we call it space occupying lesion, some type of a mass in your head which is not always cancer, but it's something that is taking up space. So when you have an orgasm that is you have your sign of this space occupying lesion earlier than you would normally have it in just normal life. So it would be a, a early sign. So for that, you would need to have investigation by a physician. And most of the time, they'll do a CT scan or an MRI of your brain and look to see if there are any of these things. Because if there are, then you're going to need treatment for that specific problem. And when they resolve, the headache should resolve. So... To be clear, what we're saying is that most people who get orgasmic headaches don't have anything wrong that they need to worry about. They can be treated. There are treatments. We'll discuss what those are. Uh, and they, they generally pass. Well, if you start having them, a couple weeks go by, you continue to have sex, you stop having them. After a while, that's, you do. That's what most people That's do. usual. But we want to make the point that even if you're in that category of most people and it'll go away in a couple of weeks, it's potentially life-threatening. And it's a warning sign that you should not ignore. And so if you have them, immediately get in touch with your physician. Say, this is happening to me. What are we going to do? And they will advise you then. Typically what they want to do is take a, a CT scan. Mm -hmm. uh, and to look, look for these, at your brain. These things that Kathy's talking about. Mm -hmm. And for preventative medicine's sake and for your own peace of mind, it's well worth doing. I think, I think it's essential, especially if it's a new onset and it's really severe then you should you should go to the doctor for that and and not wait. Mm -hmm. But uh, but many people have these off and on throughout their lives and it's not the worst headache of their life, but it is severe. Sometimes it's very brief where it comes on with the orgasm and goes away, and sometimes it has a, a lasting effect through the day, and that ruins your day. Yeah. I mean, it's just like having migraines all the time. That <laughs> ruins your day. I'm, all I'm here to tell you, the fear of not ever having sex or an orgasm again <laughs> would ruin my day for many days. Well, the fear... <laughs> it, the it, fear it, there of, were no other sexual or no other health hazards involved. That right. by itself is upsetting. Because it's a negative reinforcement. It's a negative reinforcement. All of a, sudden, all of a sudden you go, oh, I don't think I want to do that. That's yeah. worse than the pleasure involved. And what's supposed to be involved. very pleasurable right. suddenly is not. So, so that is a psychological, social problem, with especially within a marriage. Condition response. But there are medications we use for this. Right. And we, uh, we can use beta blockers, which are like blood pressure medications. We can use non-steroidal anti-inflammatory like Motrin. I've told some of my patients, if you're going to have sex, then you need to take a Motrin beforehand, or if they have these commonly. Or I give them beta blockers to take. They have sex all the time. It's kind of like by Cialis that you take every day. If you have a lot of sex and you're going to have a lot of headaches, then we'll give you a beta blocker for all the time. If you don't, then you can just take it before you have sex. Mm -hmm. And that should help either stop the headache completely or lessen it so that it's not so disrupting. And, it, and the pain is not overwhelming to the pleasure. Well, you also want to make the point that not all headaches around sex or the kind we're talking about, the right. orgasmic kind. Mm -hmm. For instance, it's not uncommon for people that take uh, Viagra or Cialis mm -hmm. or one of those drugs that regulates blood flow and distorts or changes where the blood flows mm -hmm. for people to have, as a side effect, a headache. It goes yeah. to both. <clears throat> yeah, both it goes from one end to the other. <laughs> So seriously, it dilates the blood vessels in two places. It's a different kind of a headache. Right. But it really so don't does. don't get that confused with this. If you're taking one of right. those, you're probably not having what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, you're not having any life-threatening problems. You just have this disturbing kind of headache, either lasting the day after you have sex or while you're having sex, and then it goes away. Mm -hmm. But still, it's related to the drug that you're taking uh, so that you can have... Uh, good sex. <laughs> but some people actually won't take those medications just because of that, because it is so disturbing to have a headache, they won't take their Viagra or Cialis. We usually try all of the types of medication for ED 
before we give up. Right. And, and say, the one that cause yeah, the one that may be more acceptable to one patient over another. And that's amazing. I mean, really, all of those ED medicines work the same way. It's similar. They're similar. But They're not exactly the same. You need to try, or I've been told you need to try each one to see which one gives you the best results for the least side effects. That's true. I mean, that's back true. pains, headache pains, if you have no, If you have no side effects right. then you're from lucky. any of them, <laughs> then then you and then you got the right one the should, first time. You should just keep taking the drug you're taking. And, and it's kind of like anti-anxieties and antidepressants. I mean, mm-hmm. they, they have to find the one that works on your system. Everybody is that's right. Marginally unique, and the, and then speaking of medications, right? There's actually some medications that make that are known to cause HSAs that, yeah, that cause these. And so you may want to look through your medication list so that you can figure out whether you're on any of these medications. But first of all, well, this won't be on your medication list. But marijuana makes them <laughs> makes. It makes HSAs Unless it's in a worse. State that you can get medical marijuana. I guess that would well, be part of your. Yeah, it would be part of your health history, but still, <clears throat> in any case, it won't be at your pharmacist. I don't right. think, yeah. or your regular pharmacist. Yeah, most of us are not in those states and won't be getting the medical marijuana even in those states. But most people take me- medical marijuana for migraines, but it does not work for this. Right. In fact, it makes it worse. Yeah. So I don't suggest that as a treatment. Well, that's because in the this states is not a migraine. Right. I mean, it, it's not. It's like, you know, uh, and that's, again, a distinction that we want to make. This is an unusual and rare type of headache. And there's there's also a very common blood pressure drug or antiarrhythmic that it does both called amiodarone. Many people take this and it can cause HSAs. So if you're on amiodarone. Is that a generic name? Yes. For a whole bunch of specific. No, it's a, it's a generic name for one drug. For one drug. And it's a very inexpensive drug, very commonly used for blood pressure and arrhythmias. And therefore, is you, there are many people on it. So if you're on that and you have you begin to have HSAs, then you should ask your doctor who put you on that for an alternative. It's also, not. Pseudofedrins. Yes. I mean, Pseudofed, you take over the counter. Math, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's got a really bad name because it's misused by people yes. doing illegal things. But Sudafed has always been a really good medication for allergies and for uh, for uh, nasal drip and sinus so again, infections. again, it's a fluid regulator. Yeah, it actually, it, well, the way it regulates fluid is by... Um, actually constricting the blood vessels right. Right. and so therefore that goes it's along with this type of headache so Sudafed can actually cause this kind of headache it's almost like a step up process you're taking the Sudafed to regulate the fluids by constricting mm-hmm. the vessels in your head then you start to have sex and you reach the point of orgasm which also constricts right. the blood Makes vessels it and so worse. it's a double whammy and you're more likely to get the headaches and so anything that is going to constrict the blood vessels, ADD medicines, anything like that, is going to be put you at risk for having HSAs. And maybe something that if you can find an alternative that doesn't do that, a different type of drug for your problem, your doctor should know that if there is an alternative, then changing that drug is the f- easiest way to treat this rather than adding another medication like a beta blocker. Right. So I would first... You know, bring your med list and say anything here, bother, you know, causing this, and just to jog their memory. <laughs> well, and because then, that will make the, uh, I mean, they still, may still want a CT scan, but they right. may say, well, let's take you off of this for a couple weeks mm-hmm. and see if that solves the problem. And if it does, you probably don't need the CT scan. While you're waiting for your turn to have the CT scan, then you may not need it if right. it goes away. Well, what about birth control pills? Birth control pills actually cause this very often. So oftentimes we have to find another form of birth control for people. So it is It is also, it's not exa- exactly a vasoconstrictor, but for, and I don't believe they know the mechanism of this. It may be really low estrogen levels and really low progesterone levels and testosterone as well. But they still think it's causative, not just a corollary. Right. It's causative. But they, but they don't know what the causative is. They don't know exactly is. what the mechanism is. Yeah. So that's something that isn't obvious by the physiology of the, uh, or pharmacology, excuse me, of the drug. It is, it is associated with it, but we aren't sure why. Okay. So that's something you can also you could change to a Mirena IUD and and so that and not have, and not have that even as same. an issue. Yeah. So but and that's very well tolerated by most people. So um, that's that pretty much 
is all the research we have on the medications that could be causing this. Right. But I mean, it's a serious problem, and it's one that really frightens people, and they're always aware of this until their memory kind of covers it over like we cover over everything that is is scary or like childbirth we forget how bad it was we after a while if you've had a, an episode of this or several episodes in a row you forget how bad it was so then we slowly go back to normal activity it's one of those things god gave us to allow us to live past, after kind of trauma so this is one of the things that you kind of forget you had and it may come back it right. doesn't it doesn't doesn't preclude you from getting a workup if it is really severe. Right. When it if it comes back again later, because it could be from a whole different cause. So and I just want to make that. You can't afford not to know. I you mean, have if, to if know. If you have a brain tumor or a brain lesion or one of these other issues, the the brain doesn't have any place to stretch or grow. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. when something happens inside the brain that crowds that space, mm -hmm. whether it's a bleed or, or the growth of a tumor then that's functionality threatening at a minimum and life, life threatening, threatening. At, a, at a maximum. Mm -hmm. And so they need to get on top of that as quickly as they can. So don't just tell yourself, oh, I'm embarrassed, or oh, it'll go away, or oh, it only happened once. Or oh, I don't want to talk to my doctor about this because I don't want to talk about sex with my doctor. If that's the case, you probably need a different doctor. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> but, you know, if you're embarrassed to talk to who you Even go to. Even if you're 80. <laughs> Even if you're 80. But having said that, it is, an, it is difficult to talk to anybody about your sex life. It's very personal, and it's hard to talk about, even in my office. So, But it is necessary. You can't just ignore this. And I, I expect an 85-year-old, I would be concerned about, you know, a stroke. stroke. Yeah, absolutely. So I would, be, I would ask them not to have sex until we figured this out, you know, because if there's a little bleed, there could be another bleed. Mm -hmm. We're not neurosurgeons or neurologists. This is this is kind of where two specialties come together. So OBGYN, endocrinology, and neurology. So I'm not pretending to be a neurologist or to know as much as they do. But we do know about this particular area where it bumps up against neurology. And we'll leave it to the specialists. I used to work with a neurologist at a local hospital. <clears throat> we were both teaching at the university. Uh, and so we'd have lunch together occasionally. She worked in the head trauma unit, mm -hmm. and she said it's a very common fear or anxiety that people who've had head traumas or heart attacks have. Can I have sex again? Will sex kill me? Mm -hmm. And is it possible that my blood pressure issues or stroke issues, whatever mm -hmm. it might be, will kill me if I have sex? And she said men are really afraid of it. Well, it's uh, more likely that it'll cause ED before it causes that's what You'd she said. Problems. She says she does have to tell them it can happen. And so, you know, there are things we need to know. For instance, the other type of HSA, which is not the orgasmic variety, but the slow mm -hmm. build variety, mm -hmm. there are some skills that you can learn about regulating your pacing and your breathing to slow the intensity down mm -hmm. and diminish or uh, uh, alleviate the headache altogether. So oh, I didn't know that. That's there, good. There are some things that you can do if that's the kind that you're having. But again, never self-diagnose. <laughs> Talk to your doctor or go and get a medical exam. And then if that's what you're looking at, look into what are the treatment options, what are the behavioral options mm -hmm. that I can practice in order to make myself uh, safe and able to have this pleasure. Always take care of yourself first. May save your life. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.